Right. Um, so within course last time, uh, we had mostly addressed um, two types of exercises. One was the take home exercise, which you pursued using agent based model. That was with a predefined model, uh, the model involved infection spread. And uh, we used it to, to explore a set of concepts. Um, one of the concepts was the notion of emergence, these uh, patterns which came out of it, which were distinct from anything directly specified in the model, but rather came from a, a collection, an interaction of a collection of factors in the model that gave rise to higher level behavior. Just like a set of cars in a road can give rise to patterns that are bigger than any one car. The pattern of a traffic jam, for example, or smoothly flowing traffic. These are, these are patterns that exist at a higher level than the pieces themselves, than the cars or the trucks individually. So we, we talked about emergence there. And in the second exercise, we also saw emergence in a sort of particularly elementary form. We, we had a stock. We had a flow out of the stock whose value depended linearly, just the constant times the value of the stock. And, and out of it came a pattern of behavior over time in which the value of the stock dropped quickly at first and then dropped more, more slowly down here. Um, that too could be seen as sort of a particularly simple, almost trivial sort of example of, of emergence, but you know, it wasn't pre-programmed into the system. Nowhere did we say, make the curve this shape. It, it emerged from the factors that were placed in the model. And today we're gonna to see system dynamics models which exhibit more complex patterns uh, coming from interaction of, of many stops and flows. But I also emphasized a little bit a very basic feature of, of modeling where in these models, they characterize dynamical systems. And informally, we might say a system, a dynamical system is, is typically a system where the behavior exhibited over time depends on the what of the system. Anyone? Begins with an S, ends with an E. Sorry? State, the state of the system. The current state of the system dictates the behavior. We saw that in that age-based model that we started with, where you know which agents were susceptible and infected right now dictates which ones are at risk of infection the next little bit, right? We saw it in the later model too. Where do we see it in the later model? If we were to to go to that later model, and I'll I'll go call it up here. Um, uh, but if we were to go um, look at that later model, where is the dependence of state in that model? Anyone? Where is the dependence of behavior on state in that model? Where do we see that in that model? Anyone? I'm sorry. In the, structure. in the structure of the model is right. Yes, and and what particular aspect? Uh, okay, that's that's interesting. That it. Okay, I I can't. I think I called up. Uh, uh, I called up a PLE. Well, okay, fine. Um, sorry, I called up the wrong wrong version. Um, which is gonna uh cause some some issues here. Okay, so. Come on. Um, so, so yes, we saw it in the structure. And what about the structure? What about the structure indicated that the behavior over time depended on state? Anyone? Uh, yes, Tony. The flow, the value of the flow depends on the? Okay, it depends on a parameter, but that's not state. It, but it depends on something else that is the state that does capture state. And what is that? 
Yeah, the number of susceptible. So stocks, remember, stocks dictate the state of the system. Stocks constitute the state of the system in a uh, in an agent based. Uh, excuse me, in a in a system dynamics model, a stock and flow model. So I'm going to share this model here, and I'm going to just arrange this so that that it's less overlapping. I'm going to share my screen, I should say. Here we go. Here we go. And what we see is the value of this flow depends on the value of this stock. So Tony's exactly right. The flow depends on the state here. And the state consists of a single element of state, the number of susceptible, right? If you had a million people in the susceptible stock, the value of the flow would be much higher than if you had a thousand, right? Much higher than if you had one, right? So we see a dependence on state. Beyond that, we see that this next little ink, next little change caused by the flow updates that state. It changes that state, just like the infection of nearby individuals in that agent base model changes the state. So from the current state, we compute the change that will occur and that updates the state, right? And from iterating that process, we see emergent behavior arise. Now, this model additionally exhibits some features that are of central interest within system dynamics modeling. And there's a particular notion of feedback in system dynamics modeling. It's of central interest. And I would argue that in building this model, you added a key feedback. What is that feedback that's, that's shown here? Can anyone say? There's a feedback. Yes, and Mathieu. The lower the number of susceptibles, the lower the number of infections. Okay. So, so, so here, as you have, if we were to change the number of susceptibles, and it's easiest to think of it as when you try to derive whether it's a negative or a positive feedback, it's easy to think, okay, if this increases, that will lead to number of new infections to go up or down, uh, up, that's right. If, if we increase susceptible by millions from a thousand, it would lead to a huge increase in the number of new infections, right? And then as the number of new infections goes up, does it tend to drag down or drag up the number of susceptible? Okay. Down, down. So this is actually a balancing feedback. This is a feedback which is a negative feedback. And one of the features of that is that an original change in the system leads to a cascading series of changes that push back again, dampen, um, lower the effect of that original change. So susceptible goes up, but leads to a, a faster rate of an infections, a faster uh, draining of number of new infections, which lowers susceptible. And in fact, we saw the behavior that came from it writ large exactly here. Systems like this with negative feedbacks seek stability. They seek balance. They resist change. You change this and it seeks to sort of restore something closer to what, what it came from. So it resists that change. It pushes back against it. That doesn't mean the change is totally reversed but it means it pushes uh, back against it. And here, that's what we see. So I'd like to run this. And, um, and let's, let's play with this a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna run this here model and we're going to see it drain over time, but more to the point, we, we can see it up here, right? And we'll see it drain down. It goes down quickly at first. Why is it going down quickly at first? Because there are 
more, yeah, more susceptibles, and therefore there are more people to get infected. If there's very few of them, there'll be very few people to get infected, right? Um, and it's going down. Let's suppose we were to intervene on this right now, and let's suppose we were to pump it back up. I'm going to put in a hundred thousand here, hundred thousand people. All right, I just restored it. Guess what will happen? It'll increase to 100,000 because I told it, make the state 100,000, right? And, and then what will happen? It'll pull back again, right? It'll, it'll try to resist it. And if I put it to, you know, 200,000, I say, well, I'm going to back this up to 200,000. And again, we'll, we'll decrease it. It's seeking stability. And Stability for it is a situation where the outflow is equal to the inflow. Here, there's no inflow. The inflow is zero. And the outflow, it wants it to be zero. It wants it to be zero. If, and the only way it's going to be zero is if the what here is zero. The susceptibles are zero. So it's just going to drain this down, drain this down. Now, this is emblematic of feedback, which is central in system dynamics modeling. We have the stops, which represent accumulations. They represent the state of the system, the memory of the system. And we have these flows, which represent change within the system. Now, we also, for that first model we looked at, we had state. What, what's the state there in that first model? Anyone say, what, what's the state of that first model? Yeah, with the gray. Um, this is like this. It's supposed to be 2,000 or whatever. And then they had infections with another state. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, so it's a lot more to keep track of there. But more than this, does it matter where the susceptibles are, where the infectives are? Oh, did, did I hear last time that maybe there were some rumblings that some of that behavior depends on whether the infection started near the corner or started yes. near the side? It, it actually does. So the state of that first model we looked at is a lot bigger than one number. Here, the state is given by one number. For that first model, we have to specify for each, ladies and gentlemen, each of those grid squares. What? its state is. And its state could be one of three things. What are those three things? Central infected or recovered, right? We think about the number of possible states it could have. Well, if we had one grid square, it could be one in three states. It could be, right? Two grid squares, it could be in how many states? Well, the first could be in any of the three, and the second could be in any of the three. If we had n, how many could it be in? Three to the power n, right? If it was a single grid square, it could be in one of three states. If it's if it's two grid squares, it could be in three times three. Three, what's it times? Um, maybe I'll make it an x, right? Three possible ones for the first, three possible for the second. But if you had three grid squares, it could the number of states that could be in, well, you have three for the first, three for the second, three for the third, right? The first doesn't prevent the second from being in a certain state, so they're independent here um, in terms of possibility. And in general, it's gonna be three to the N, where N, I'll put it a capital N, where N is the number of grid squares, right? Grid squares. And I'm not gonna do the calculation, but, I can assure you three to the 50,000 or whatever it is, is a lot bigger than one number, right? Um, so that's a huge state there. And the possible changes that can take, given that state, the changes that take place are also much more um, involved to specify. There, there's a lot more things, but here we have a, a single element of state and we have change and we, we have some behavior exhibited. But ladies and gentlemen, I wanna I wanna dive into this a little bit more. 
So this is what we call a first order delay. Okay. This is, I told you before that the building blocks of stock and flow models are predictably enough from its name, what and what? Stocks and flows. But at a higher level model, these models are composed of higher level patterns or higher level elements. How many people in here have taken 270? Just about every, right? How about 370? Okay, I think many of you in 270, particularly if you took it last term, you would have seen some things with patterns, the command pattern or the strategy pattern, maybe publish, subscribe, other patterns. Those are patterns. They're, they're not just one variable or one function, but it's 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 the interaction of some structure and 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 variables, et cetera, some state, um, some behavior. And and we have higher level structures in modeling too. They're sometimes called molecules or system dynamic. But this is perhaps the most the most common, the grandmother of all of all patterns in system dynamics, as it were, as a first order delay. Now its name may seem like a mystery because it's not clear what delay there is, but we'll, we'll come to that right now. And in a first order delay, this is one face of it. It actually, you could kind of render it in a couple of different ways, but the key defining feature is, please take note of this. We have an outflow whose value depends linearly on the value of the stock that it drains. Okay. Um, when I say linearly, I mean that the value of this outflow is a constant. That's what this is. It's just some constant. It doesn't change, right? Times the number of susceptibles. Hmm? Double the number of susceptible, you double the value of the outflow. Triple the number of susceptible, triple the value of the, the outflow. It depends linear. It's just the value of the number of susceptible times some constant, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's let's explore this a little bit more. Okay. Um. So I'm going to take this and I am going to insert a flow into this. Here we go. Flow into the number of susceptible. And this is going to be called um, uh, losing, well, okay, uh, becoming susceptible. That's a good way to put it. Becoming susceptible, okay? Um, and I'm going to make this a constant. I'm going to make it 100. And, and I will tell you, if I say 100, it's incomplete. Why is that incomplete? If I describe it to you as 100. What I really need is a hundred. What do I need to say for a flow? A flow is a what? Yeah, a unit over time. So it's a hundred per unit, right? Per day. Just a unit of the model is day. This is important, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of numbers in the world where the time unit they, they express rates. They express Value uh, per unit time. If you don't specify the unit time, it's it's kind of obscure, right? If you say, you know, Saskatoon is really growing quickly, and they say, and someone says, how quickly is it growing? And you said we had a hundred more people. They could be excused for asking, well, a hundred more people per per year, per, year, per decade. Per, per day, per month, like what does that mean? Like a hundred is not a full statement, right? Um, of that. Similarly, if you said there's lots of people being admitted to Royal University Hospital for RSV infection right now, a lot of kids. And someone asked you how much, and you said, you know, I've seen it, the last few numbers have been 10. They just 10 per week, 10 per day, 10 per hour. It matters a lot, right? Or if someone said, my income is 100,000. Well, 100,000 what? It's like ringgit, um, you know, per 
Oops. per day or per year or per 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 month. Um, there's a lot of quantities where when when we're dealing with rates, it by by its nature we need to specify a unit. So this is a hundred per day, and I say per day because the time units of the model are per day, right? Okay. Now I want you to tell me. So now I have a flow in. It's a hundred per day, right? What do you think the What do you think the behavior of this is going to be? The induced behavior, the emergent behavior. What's going to happen? Anyone want to uh, conjecture? Uh, Tony, uh, is it, uh, increasing the sentinel. Okay, so okay, so so it is undeniably true that by flowing in, we're going to have more susceptibles than we would otherwise have had, right? So you could say it's increasing the number of susceptible. This inflow is increasing it. That's certainly true, and that's a good observation. But does that mean the number of susceptible will go up at the start? Why not? Because, uh, because when you when you say becoming susceptible, they first you have to pass the subject line become like recovered and then become again susceptible. And well, it takes time like become susceptible uh, from the start. For example, one person when one person gets sick, it takes time that the other one becomes susceptible. You mean you could feel well, it. okay. So so I think you're talking about um something we could capture in a model, but this particular model doesn't capture the stages of illness. Yes, it actually will, but not yet. We're going there. So, so if we if we just take a look at this model, we have a stock with a flow into it of a hundred, and then we have a flow out whose value is what? Okay, it's new infections. And what's the value of that given by? We said it earlier. Probability times the probability times the number of susceptible, right? This stock will go up if, under what condition will this stock rise? It, okay, well, okay, I'm, I'm hearing some ideas here, but can anyone put it clearly? The value of the stock will rise. Think about water in your bathtub. The water in your bathtub will rise if, Harriet? You've got it, you've got it. That's exactly it. And one of the most important things to understand if you're trying to interpret certain types, a broad set of classes of data from the world that involve counting the number of people in the hospital, the number of people in a population, you know, China's population. If you wanted to, to look at understanding the number of people who are current active cases in Saskatchewan of COVID-19. You want to understand any of those. This relationship articulated by Harriet is exactly it. The question is, are the people coming in faster than they're leaving? If they're leaving faster than they're coming in, the value of the stock will what? Reduce. Peak go down. If they're leaving faster than they're coming in. If they're coming in faster than they're leaving, the value of the stock will Reduce. go up. Okay, good. This is, oh God, if, if you remember one thing for your final exam, please remember that, okay? When you look at a number and you see it going over time, it tells you all the world about whether the inflows are greater than the outflows or vice versa. If this stock were straight, if I, if I told you on the final exam, the value of a stock with an inflow and an outflow, the value of the stock over time is flat. It's no, neither going up or going down. What does that tell us about the inflow and outflow? They have to be what? Equal. 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 Well, this is true for interpreting age based models, too. You know, um, we're going to be able to, to learn a lot about age based models by reason about inflow and outflow. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because it's because we're going to be going to age based model shortly. Okay, so all this is excellent, but so I, I asked my question again. Here we have a model. We can run this. What will this stock do at first? Will it go up or will it go down over time at first? 
Okay, so I'm hearing some thinking. So we have a hundred people coming in. How many people? A oh, hundred people. I, I, what I just said. Don't listen to him. <laughs> um, I had a hundred people per day coming in, right? And how many people are going out per day? Well, okay, so the value for this is given by, again, it's given by what? Probability, this probability times the number susceptible, right? Number of people susceptible is 200,000 initially, initially, right? And the probability per day is 0 0.01, right? So 200,000 times 0.01 is what? 2,000, right? Right? Um, if we're 100,000 times one over 100, it will be 1,000, right? Um, so, so we know it's 2,000. So we have 100 per day coming in, and we have 2,000 per day coming out. Will that stock go up or down? Down. It's going to start going down over time. Does that mean it will forever go down? Until when will it go down? Until, uh, okay, but this is fixed. Imagine this is constant. It's always going to be 100. No matter how far you look out, it's 100. The value of the stock is going to go down until what? Okay, until the susceptible is 10,000. And why did you pick 10,000? Because it's going to be like 100 per day. 100 per day. So the until the what equals the what? It's gonna go down until the inflow inflow. until the inflow equals the outflow. You folks understand that principle? Yeah. Please, we're paying that. Paying that. Okay. Good. Good. You don't understand the significance of what you're saying because if you retain this in mind, you're gonna be able to understand a lot of phenomena in the world better. Okay, let's go look at this. So it's going to go down initially, and then it's going to take, continue going down until the inflow equals the outflow, right? Which, um, and your name that observed that it's uh, at 10,000 is what? Ali. We've got multiple Ali's. Great. Um, okay, so it's going down, and here, it's flat now. Why isn't it going to zero? Ladies and gentlemen, why is it going to zero? Sorry? Yeah, the inflow is equal to the outflow. So it, the stock will be doing what? Staying the same, right? Inflow equals outflow, the stock going to drain. Okay, so we can run this, so we can continue to run it, but it's in balance now. When I say in balance, the inflow equals the outflow, right? Okay, now let's suppose I move this upwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change it to fifty thousand. Hmm. Hmm. I just changed it to fifty thousand. What's gonna happen? It will initially go up, and then it will come back down until what? Yeah. So the until they're equal, right? Um. Okay, now suppose, let's be clever. I'm going to change this. I'm not going to increase it. I'm going to decrease it. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it zero. Gosh darn it, I'm going to make it zero. What's going to happen now? It's going to be going down, but then it will be stopped. Okay, so, but if I set this to zero, go to zero, okay. And then what will happen? It will go up. It will go up. But why will it go up? What's the if this is zero? What's the outflow going to be? Well, sorry. If, if this is zero, the outflow will be. If there's nobody susceptible, how many are going to get infected? Zero. Zero. Constant times it, right? And so the inflow will be greater than the outflow, and so this will rise, right? Are we, are we ready to see that? Okay. There it goes. It goes back up until the, it will rise until the inflow equals outflow, right? Um, and this is why I say it seeks stability, right? I can change this to anything. I could, I could change it to 
you know, a hundred, uh, right? I could change the value of the stock to a hundred. And will it rise or will it fall? The value of the stock being a hundred? It'll increase because the value if the value of the stock is a hundred, the outflow will be one. No, if the value of the stock is a hundred, the outflow is gonna be 0 0.01 times a hundred, which will be one. One stinking person per day, leave it, right? And it comes back up, right? And I could change this all I want to whatever number I want, 25,000, it will come. Do you see why I say the system resists change? Wherever we push it, it wants to get back to a state back. And balance is defined by what? Inflow equals outflow. Do we see that? Okay, now, further, I would argue that if we were to modify this inflow, and we can't do it here in this in this interface, but if we were to modify it, if we were to change this to two hundred, suppose we were to run this for a while, it's it's in balance. Inflow equals outflow, right? Inflow one hundred, outflow one hundred. If I were to change this inflow to 200, what would happen? It will rise because we'll have more coming in initially than is leaving. Well, 200 coming in and only 100 leaving. So it'll rise until <laughs> inflow <laughs> equals outflow, right? Let's. I have a question. Yes. What happens if you give it exactly the number of susceptible? Like a kind of what would happen? If you give it the same amount of susceptible as the becoming susceptible, what would happen? Well, okay. Uh, you mean if if I make this a hundred, I'll tell you what will happen. Um, in fact, we already did it. If I make this a hundred, this is, and and I'll tell you why it's not really a meaningful thing. But I can make this a hundred, sure. And what will the outflow be? One. 0.01 times 100, so it'll be one person leaving per day and 100 coming in per day. And guess what the flow will do? It'll increase because we have 100 coming in per day and one leaving per day. We get that? Okay, and and so it'll rise. Now, the reason I say it's not really meaningful is because you can't really compare 100 people in a meaningful way with 100 per day on the other. It, it's like comparing one square meter with one linear meter or something. It's like they're different units, right? If, if I make my units years here, this would be called per year, not 100, but 100 times 365. And, and yet, you know, it's per day, it's the same value. You know, per year, we're just expressing it per year, and this is 100 people. We can't really say that they're the same, just because they're the same number doesn't mean it's meaningful. It just happens to be the same number when this is quantified per day. It's it's not something deep. I'll probably come back to this point later in the course, so, but yes, Ardalan. So, uh, what uh, parameters should be used? So, for example, like one measure should be used later on in the model, like gain. Well, you you use a you use a um, unit that's convenient for you, and where it helps your thinking to think in terms of the unit. But just recognize that we can convert from one unit to another within the same dimension. Just like we, could, I'll be with you just a sec. We can convert from a, you know, if if someone tells me I was asleep for, you know, two hours. You could convert that to uh, so sleep for 120 minutes. You, we can go back and forth as long as it's the same dimension. Yeah. You can't compute, you can't change that into a dollar value. You can't change it into a count of person because it's a different type of thing. I mean, the reason I'm asking that is because yeah. per day, per week, per year, yeah. the for activity, sometimes the result will change dramatically. Yeah, but uh, we're, when we're, so that's true. And, and, you're pointing to a fact that's an important deep fact about modeling, which is when we're describing phenomena in the world, how we describe them shouldn't be different 
based on the unit systems we use. So if I were to take this model and instead ask you, ask you to express it in a cognitive of years, you could create the same model describing the same phenomenon, behaving the same way in terms of years. This value, instead of 100, would be 100 times 365. Because it's 365 days per year times 100. And that's the number of people that come in per year. This value wouldn't change at all. And this, we would change this to be a probability per year of infection. And it'll be a lot bigger, it'll be 365 times. Here. By the way, it's not a probability, probably per year, okay? And a probability per day, but this would be 365 times it. And the behavior elicited would be totally consistent with this in terms of what is it is happening at one time. So in other words, we can ex re-express this model perfectly consistently in terms of years to what behavior we see here. Now, what we're talking about here is, is it has much deeper implications. And, and here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, but the world cannot care. It does not care what unit system we use. The world's not gonna, you know, it's not like, you know, the, the, the earth will crash if we, choose to go to the imperial unit system that you know we adopt inches instead of you know centimeters that the world's going to split apart into pieces and hurl off into space <laughs> you know um that that's just not the nature of physical reality that it will care what unit system we do um so when we describe the world with our models that actually constrains our models like there there'll be models that are meaningless um, once you take that into account, like where we're adding people to dollars or something stupid like that, you know, adding people to people per day, that's meaningless. And it turns out that knowing this about the world constrains our models, it limits what models are legitimate. And there's a lot of subtlety here that I don't have time to get into because this is our one day for system dynamics before we're going on to agent-based modeling. So I, I can't afford to spend more time on this. But what I will say is that if I were to, to, to increase this to 200, this will follow to retain, this will tend to move up, and it will follow. If I change this to 1,000, this will tend to follow, and the system will evolve until it's in balance, and at balance, there'll be 1,000 people per day out and 1,000 people per day in. But you'll notice it will rise in a delayed fashion. It will it will follow this, but not immediately. It will go up over time until it's in balance, and that's why we call it a first order delay. Okay. Okay. Now we want to go much further with this model, and we have a lot of time. But we have a lot of things to cover in the next little bit. So um, there was a question though in the back. So we choose the units in a way that are that are is convenient for us, the units of the model. We can express a model like this in years, in days, and femtoseconds, and seconds, and and you know centuries if we wanted to. Um, but often it wouldn't be convenient for us to do that. And so we choose the units in a way that will be convenient for us. Now, we have to be consistent when we choose a given unit so we express it in consistent units. So, you know, if, if the inflow is expressed people per day, you want the outflow to be expressed at people per day. And so we, it's not like we can do whatever we want, whatever piece of the model. I'm just saying for the model as a whole, you, you, you stick to a unit system and you make sure the model adheres to that unit system and you can choose that at your convenience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Tony. Um, and, uh, sorry, I should ask this gentleman's name. Shiva. 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 Thank you. Yes, so Tony. Regarding this model, so yeah. my, I see the front half is a uh, positive feedback, right? But no, the, no, the like becoming susceptible to susceptible. There's no positive feedback. There's no feedback here. No matter what value this is, this doesn't change. 
So there's no feedback. Oh, I see. So can I draw it to a conclusion that no matter like what the variable of susceptible, it's gonna like the rap kind of increase and increase at first, and then it's gonna stay balanced. Well, the rest. so the issue of feedback. So this is a good question. So Tony was asking, first of all, is there a positive feedback here? No, there's one feedback in this model, and that's the what feedback, the negative feedback. This thing is susceptible increases. New infections tends to increase, and that tends to uh, lower susceptible. So there's a negative feedback here. Now, this inflow is not in any feedback. Regardless of the value of susceptible here, the inflow will be the same. So I'm saying it's not in a feedback. Now, Tony was asking perceptively, you know, what does that tell us about the behavior of it? Well, this issue of inflow and outflow is a different issue than the feedback structure. So if, if this inflow is at a rate that's higher than the initial outflow, um, uh, then the value of the stock will tend to go up from the start. If the value of the inflow is lower, then the initial outflow, it'll tend to go down at first. It's, it's draining faster than it's coming in, right? Um, but it's not be, it's not dictated by there being a feedback here. It's not like they're fighting and there's a feedback. No, 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 don't, don't worry about that. This is, is not something dictated by the feedback. Inflow and outflow is something different than we think about when, we, when we're considering competing feedbacks. It, it's it's not totally divorced from it, but you can think about it without considering the feedback. I hope that's helpful. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we will be seeing a positive feedback if we move quickly. Um, but I wanted to make sure you're comfortable with the study of inflow and outflow. The value of a stock will go up if the in, and that's actually if the sum of the inflows, because there might be more than one is greater than the sum of the outflows. Hmm? There might be an outflow for death too, another outflow for infections. If the sum of the inflows is greater than the sum of the outflows, the stock will be going up. If they're equal, the stock, the value of the stock will do what over time? If the sum of the inflows is equal to the sum of the outflows, the stock will be doing what over time? Remain the same, good. And if the outflows, some of the outflows is greater than the sum of the inflows, the stock will do what? Go down. Please keep that in mind, okay? Um, this is one of the most important observations here. And if you apply it systematically, you will do quite well in areas of this course, if you take that to its logical conclusion. But now we have work to do. So I'm gonna save this as version two and, um, I'm actually not going to post because we're going to not immediately. Um, well, okay, fine. I, I will. I will post it. Yeah, we can actually make use of this in a in a certain way. Okay, I'm going to post this here. There we go. Um, models not discussed in class. Models built in class. There we go. There we go. Okay, and. Okay. Do do do. No no no. Um, not in. Okay. Where where are my models? There's uh models. There we go. There we go. And it should be posted. And this one is not hidden originally. I I don't know the logic. Okay. Okay. Great. So let's let's go back to this. So it's posted. If anyone wants to get it. Okay. So let's go extend this model. Shall we not? Good. Um, so we are going to add in another stock called infectious. Are we ready with this? Go to the palette, go to system dynamics in the palette. How do I do that? Well, use the palette here. If you can't see the palette, make sure it's uh, enabled here, okay? You may have to go to view and turn it on conceivably to use it for the first time. Make sure the palette is visible wherever it is, right? It could be down here, it could be could be up here, where, wherever it is. You can drag these things around. That's not that's not material. It's not particularly concerning. 
but go to the system dynamics area of the palate, and we're going to drag in a stalk, and it's going to be called infectious. Now, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. I'd ask you to pay attention to what I'm doing because it can spare you some grief. If you click on this and you drag in, put it over where you want to put it, and make sure that it's fully connected. And a lot of these things it will turn green, but just make sure it's fully connected because sometimes things are right next to each other. It looks like they're possibly connected, but they're not. You can also sort of yank at it and make sure it moves around, right? So I'm gonna call this stock, I'm gonna call it infectives, okay? Infectives, or call it infective because I called it susceptible, not susceptible the. I'm gonna call it infective, okay? going to count the number of people that are infected. Remember in the agent-based model, um, when we were keeping track of model state, each person was in one state or another, but we didn't, we didn't just deal with counts of people who are susceptible or counts of people who are infected. No, 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 no. Um, each person was in one state or another. Um, and each separate person we kept track of. Here we're keeping track of the number that are that are number that are infected. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what would happen if I ran this model right now? What do you think will happen? Okay, okay, I'm going to I'm going to say its initial value will be zero for simplicity for now. And I'm going to go actually take becoming susceptible for simplicity in our understanding. I'm going to turn this to zero. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm making becoming susceptible zero. Who's saying? Yeah, that. Um, zero. Okay. And so no one's going to come in here. We're going to start with 200,000 people and susceptible, uh, a zero and in infected. What's going to happen over time? Can anyone tell me? So uh, yes, gentlemen, uh, name? Uh, no. Mel? Yeah. Great. It'll eventually become 200,000. Good, it'll become 200,000. Excellent. Will it initially be going up quicker? Uh, will, it, will it go up quicker at first and then slower or, or slower at first and then quicker? Okay, so quicker at first and then slower. Why is that? Yes, because initially there's a lot of people getting sick from susceptible, so it'll be dropping quickly. There's a lot of people to get sick and then then slower. Okay, so let's go run this thing if we could. Um, maybe actually to, to, to really run this well, let's go up and tweak this graph if we could. Okay, we're going to tweak this graph. We're going to add something to it for infective. So I'm going to do plus here. And I'm going to say infective, okay? And its value will be the number infective. Are we okay with that? How did I do that? What did I do? I went up to this graph, which we have here. I went here and I did a plus. And the value is infective. And the val uh, sorry, the title is infective and the value is infective. The value is this. It's going to be reporting that. Okay. So again, all I did was I added this. How did I add it? I I did this to add it in, and I filled in infective for the title and infective for this value. This is just the title of it. Are we okay with that? Okay. Build early, build often. See this thing up here. You could use it to build the model. Okay. Okay. So now let's run this. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Okay. So we're, we're speeding up time and there we go. Just as Mel said, goes up faster early and slow later. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, instead of getting uh, the 
Uh, the other are some features, and what you'll find is this. It's a, it's a interesting observation. When you have an age based model, often it incorporates feedback that are not so visible. Um, we'll be talking in age based modeling where those feedbacks are. They're there. And often, using a stock and flow perspective to understand the behavior of an age based model is really helpful. So it doesn't surprise me if you were to say this looks a little, like, a little bit like behavior from that other model, because at a high level, this may roughly describe behavior of that other model. But here, what we have is susceptible starting high coming down. That was described by these infections. The bigger the value is susceptible, the more and more people per day are getting affected, right? So, or the more people are getting affected per day. But then as you as people leave susceptible, there's fewer people who are who are leaving per day, and it brings slower and slower. And the number of infected is rising. Right? Uh Tony, uh, is there a new feedback here? And must be the sign here. There is no new feedback here. There's just this single feedback. We will see a feedback later, but right now there's no feedback extra, just one feedback, which is the feedback involving susceptible to new infections as a positive link and new infections is susceptible as a negative link. So how, how can you determine the feedback? Uh, the feedbacks can be identified here by following loops, and there's a loop here between susceptible and infection, and then infection drains. So think of this as kind of oh, like two ways point, pointing pointing to this in the other direction. It's sort of it's it's draining it down. So we can actually count structurally from the structure. You can count the feedback, and I'll teach you how to do that in coming sessions on H based on on uh, system dynamics modeling. Okay, uh, good questions. Um, other questions on this behavior right now? By the way, is there an invariant here? Is there something which is always true? We have different values for susceptible and effective, but is there something about their combination which is always the same? Yes, part of what? That is true. Um, susceptible only comes down because this is the this inflow is zero, there's only an outflow. And infective can only go up because there's only an inflow, not an outflow. So that's true. But is there some quantity that's conserved, that's maintained invariant between susceptible and infective? Yes, Tony. Um, susceptible going to go down to zero, and the infective going to go up to like 200. Nice. Good. And at any one point, I would argue. Over time, these values are changing, but there's something about their combination that's not changing. Yes. The rate. And temps. The rate. Yeah. Yes. Tim, um, the rate is actually is is changing here. I mean it's the probability, I think they the probability is not changing. That's true. But there's something else involving these two. It's uh sorry, Matthew. Yeah, the total susceptible plus effective is always what value? Two hundred thousand, right? Because they're either here or they're here. It's just like there's a conservation of people to put it in physics terms, right? They're either susceptible or they're effective. Okay, okay. Let's move quickly and live light on the land. Okay. Um. This is this is good. Um, we're making some good progress here. Um, but I'd like to add some more mechanism. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, another stock, just like we did this past time. I'm going to add a stock called, and it's going to be called uh, Recovered, OK? So I, I went to the palette over here and down again to the system dynamics area and I dragged the stock in and I called it recovered, okay? Called it recovered and it's gonna start with a value of zero as well. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay, hearing no revolt in the class, uh, we'll continue on. So, now we're going to link them up with a flow. 
and this flow will be called recovery because people are going from infective to recovered. Are we okay with that? Here we go. Okay, now you'll notice this is a case. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, watch my, watch my color. I'm dragging this down and I'm trying to hitch it up. And unfortunately, these are not quite spaced correctly. When I'm careful, I space them correctly. But I'm showing this in part because you might not put them correctly. When I want to drag this on here, I'd like it to be green. And I don't know if you can see it, but if I drag it just over it right, it could turn green, like in the middle of infective there. So this is actually connected to infective. And I'll, I'll actually type in recovery, but it's not connected over here. So I have to throb it a little bit. And I'm going to sort of drag it over this and make sure, oh, no, it's still not connected. Make it green. Green is the color, and right now stock and flows of the game. Okay, um, so that's what I did. Yes, uh, Artelon. Yes, we're going to, but we haven't specified the formula yet. Okay, and I am going to go put in um, a parameter, but I'm going to use this to be a different lesson. So we could call this recovery time in days might be a reasonable way. Another way to say is, you know, duration of illness in days. I'll say recovery recovery time in days. Um, yeah, or mean days to recovery. I, you know, these are, these are all reasonable names. Often I name it in a way that reminds me it's in days or, you know, the units. Okay, and we're going to make this value, ladies and gentlemen, 10. What does that 10 mean? 10 days, 10 days. Now, I'm, I told you, first order delays come in many forms. They have many faces, okay? They, they appear with different costume times. And I'm going to be teaching you in this class at least three major costumes that they that they appear in. Okay. Um, so this will be a different costume. Here we had a probability per day of going on, of progressing. And this value here was what was this value in terms of this probability per day of going on? This value was what? I can actually see it there, but susceptible remember the defining feature of a first order delay is that it depends linearly on the value of the stock what's the stock out of which the stock is not susceptible and so this formula for this for this uh, flow is given by what probability per day and 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 what so probably per day it's susceptible is good, but how are they joined together? Multiply. Because this is a probably per day. Its unit is the unit of probability, which is one. The unit, it's dimensionless. It's like number of coin flips that turn up heads divided by number of coin flips. It's it's dimensionless. It's it's of unit dimension one over day. That's the unit of that of that probability per day, okay? And we multiply it by a susceptible to get people per day. Susceptible is people. This is the unit of susceptible, people. You multiply people times a per day value of unit one over day, and we get a people per day, which is what we want for a flow. This unit is going to be, guess what? Its name gives it away. Day, the time unit, the time unit. Okay, it's, it's, it's days. And we're gonna hitch it up to this flow, to yonder flow. And this is gonna be a first order delay. So it has to depend on what? There ain't gonna be no recovery if there are no what? Infectives to recover. So it's going to depend on that too. Notice when I dragged in these links, 
I made sure it's it's green as the color on both sides. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. If I had added it in the wrong way and I didn't make sure that it was the, the right color, um, it might have caused me grief. So I make sure it's the right color. If I had put it like this, I would have been in a bad way. So make sure it's the right color for it to be connected. Not like that, like that, yeah. Okay, because we know there'd be no recoveries without infectives. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Question is, what's the formula for this? If this is days, and we need people per day going down to recovery, we know a first order delay depends on some value from, it, it depends linearly on infection, okay? So, so the number of people recovering per day is going to be infective times something. It's, it depends linearly on it. Or you can think of it as effective divided by something. That's equally good. Um, so what's the formula for this going to be? Let me ask, recovery time in days. Let's suppose they recovered in two days. What fraction of them would you expect to get recovered in the first day? They recover on average in two days. Within the first day, you'd expect what, what fraction to get recovered? Uh, I was just the formula. It's uh, infected times uh, one over. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. And your name again? Alex. Alex, indeed. Alex got it exactly. He even made me jump with joy. That's awesome. But, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go through the reason. So, if, if the recovery time works for two days, if the mean time to recover in two days, what fraction of people would you expect to recover the first day? What, what percent? If, if, if it took on average two days for people to get recovered, what percent of them would, would recover the first day? 50%. Yeah, one half of them, right? One over two, right? If it took them four days to recover, what fraction would recover the first day? One fourth. If it required 10 days for them to recover, what fraction would recover the first day? One over 10, right? One over 10. Yeah, so one tenth of them, right? Uh, one tenth of the first day, one tenth of the second, one tenth of the third, or whatever. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? So the number of people leaving here is going to be, as as was was clearly said here, infective divided by recovery time in days. Alex got it exactly. It's going to be infective divided by recovery time in days. Okay. Um. The number of people recovering on a per day basis is going to be, you can think of it as infective times one over the recovery time in days. That's a good way to think of it. You know, if it's recovery time in days is two, it'd be infective times one half. We said it earlier. If it's recovery time in days is 10, it'll be infective times one tenth. It'd be one tenth of the effective to recover per day. Okay, so here we go. Recovery time in days. Okay, so recovery equals infective divided by recovery time and autocomplete is your friend. It's control space on the PC and Wade will say option space on automatic. Yes. Um where would I be without a way to say that every time? Yes. Um <laughs> Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, so this formula is in fact divided by the recovery time of days. And the units all make sense, right? We need people per day to be going down here. Infective is in people and recovery time of days is days. Alternatively, for those who find it handier to think about, we could make it infective times recovery time at, uh, times one over 1.0 divided by recovery time and day. So the same same thing. Um, 
but very commonly you will see it just phrased as this. This is the mean time till they recover and we divide the effective by that. Okay, so what do you think we'll see in terms of the effective, how will this change the behavior? What, what will we see in terms of the number of people who are recovered over time? Will that go up or down? Go up. Does it ever go down? Never goes down because there's no outflow, right? How about infective? Will this go up or go down initially? Um, will it always go up? Because people will recover. Okay, so so let's let's go up and add it to this chart here. We're gonna go add another one in, make it up to this chart at the top, do plus, and we are going to add in recovered here, recovered, and we will put it in the value. Oops, oops, recovered and put it in the value thing here, okay? Build early, build often. This is your build friend up here. And make make sure the build works fine. And if it doesn't, raise your hand and I'll ask Wade to help you. Who needs help? Who needs help running this? Who's beyond help? Well, okay. No, um, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna run it and um here we go. It's hard for us to keep all these things in our head, but here we go. So susceptible is here going down quickly and then going down slower, right? That was mentioned earlier. Infective rises initially, but it doesn't rise forever, right? Because people are recovering. So initially it rises, lots of people are coming in from susceptible, but then it starts draining because people are recovering. Recovered goes up, it goes up a little bit slower at first. You can kind of see it slow, but then it ramps up and it rises. Do we see this? Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and now the grand finale. Okay. It's all rising to the crescendo. And, and to see the crescendo, we have to go quickly. Okay. Okay. So, so pull on your, your boots and, and let's get going. Let's get a, a speedy march here. Okay. So, what I want you to do is we're going to make it have a positive feedback. By the way, how many feedbacks does this have? Two. Tell them. One right here for certain delay. What sort of feedback? Negative or positive? Negative. How about this one? Is that negative or positive feedback? Negative. 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 Still a first order delay. More infectives lead to more recovery, and more recovery drains down the number of infections. We're going to add our first positive feedback. Are you ready? Okay, okay. Um, let's 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 go do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, move these connections out of the way, and we are going to endogenize probability per day of infection. So go to the palette, and I'm going to add. Ask you to add. By the way, I should save this as a separate version. Save versions early and save them often, ladies and gentlemen. Take it. From an old man. Okay. Okay. So um here we go. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Out out black spot. Um, okay. Uh version three. Here we go. And um, uh, I had actually posted version two before, so I'm I'm actually gonna post this as oh no, that's not what I want. Okay, this is not going so well. Um, in terms of timing. Okay, finish. And we're going to add that in for anyone who wants it. Version three is going to be posted if you need it. Okay. Um, okay. So let's let's quickly add this. And I'm going to ask you to pay attention. If you can't follow, you can copy it from the site or from the video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So go add in from the palette. Go in, uh, add in something called contacts per day. Are we ready? Contacts per day, okay? 
and I want you to change, I want you to use uh, as contacts per day, um, 100 contacts per day, okay? Okay, now I want you to add in another parameter that's gonna be probability of transmission per discordant contact. Okay, you're gonna hate me for that. Um, but maybe you already do, so it's not going to be that much worse. Okay, make it 0.04, ladies and gentlemen. 0.04. You ready? 0.04. You can call it probability per day per contact. The point is it's going to be a contact between a susceptible and an infected. Okay. Okay. We're, 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 we're coming in for a soft landing here. If we can just keep up this momentum. Okay, I want you to add a dynamic variable. Ladies and gentlemen, a dynamic variable from that palette called total population. Okay. And I'm going to call it with a capital T because it's kind of summing up something for the, the model state. Okay. It's a dynamic variable. Now I'm going to add links from susceptible to it because it depends on susceptible. I'm going to add a link from infective to it. Depends on that. I'm going to add a link. Oh, my goodness. What other thing do I need to have the total population depend on? Recovered. Good, 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 good. Remember, the state of the model is defined by these stocks. The total population here is the sum of all those stocks, right? Good, good, good. Okay, so we need a formula for total population. What's the formula for it? A susceptible, yeah, type quickly and live light on the land, okay? Susceptible plus infective plus recovered. Good, good, good. Okay, you got you got the gist of it. Excellent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the cusp of greatness. You can see the excitement in the room. Okay, um, so now I want to add a, uh, a, a formula called... Uh, Prevalence of infection, that's that's going to be prevalence of infection. It's going to be the fraction of people that are infected. What fraction of people in the total population are infected? Can someone give me a formula? If I had to say what fraction of people in this model are infected, what would it be? Who's, who's in the denominator? If I say what fraction of the total population is infected, what's in the denominator? Well, it's people, it's true, but what particular value? Total population, I heard it right, over on the left-hand side of the room. Good, good. Um, uh, I wish I could get the name, but um, okay, total population. And then what's in the numerator? If this is a, if this is what something divided by something else, prevalence of infection, the fraction that are effective is what? Uh, no, no, no. The fraction of people in the model that are infective is what? Infective divided by total population. There you go. Okay. People, I know people have to get over to Thorvaldson. So if you need to leave, you feel free to do that here. But um, this is going to be infective divided by total population. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Spell it correctly. Autocomplete is your friend. Okay. Great. Prevalence of infection is infective divided by total population. That's a fraction of people that are infective. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to endogenize probability per day of infection. Copy the name and blow away that parameter because it's no longer going to be a parameter. It is going to be a dynamic variable. There we go. And it's called probability per day of infection. By the way, it's also known as the force of infection. But um, there we go. Okay. Probability per day of infection. And this is going to be the grand unifier of contacts per day and probability per day of discordant contact or per per of this uh, transmission per discordant contact and prevalence of infection. There we go. So watch this. I'm going to explain it to you, and you're going to be released from the class mercifully. Okay. So it's going to be contacts per day. Suppose. A susceptible has contacts per day. 
total people per day. Let's say 100 people per day. And suppose that of those people per day, say 100 per day, the fraction of them that are that are infected is given by the prevalence of infection. So suppose it's 50%. They have 100 contacts per day. 50% of those are infected. So they have 50 contacts per day with whom? With infectives. Infectives. This is a prevalence of infection. If 50% of people around them are infected and they have contact with 100 people total, 50 of those people per day are with infectives and multiply it by probability of transmission per discordant contact. And you have yourselves an honest to goodness infectious disease transmission model. There you go. It's a thing of beauty, even if it is two minutes late. Okay. Um, so I built that. I will post it, but watch the dynamics and weep. Okay. Um, you will see the classic curves come up for spread of infection in a population. And there we oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No one started infective. We need one person, one person to start infective. There we go. One person to start infective. And now we have an honest to goodness. Well, it was a model before. It just didn't have anyone start infective. It was a naive population. Okay, so here we go. And look at this. Look at it. It spreads. The number of infective rises early. Crest comes down and the number of recoveds goes up. We are happy and the population has reached a high level of infection. Okay, don't be safe out there and don't achieve a high level of infection, okay? Thank you, I will post this. Okay, great, 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 great. Can I have a question?